very good morning students uh, this particular lecture is about the mammalian kidney the structure of the mammalian kidney i will be talking about the anatomy also uh, so students first of all uh, giving something about the kidney this is the major excretory and the osmoregulatory organ of mammals so as we talk about the excretory system we talk about a pair of kidneys then we have the renal arteries we have the renal veins we talk about the ureters we talk about a bladder and we talk about a urethra so this is the total excretory system in a particular human now why this system is present in uh, the mammals now this is a very very important thing so the very first function of this system is uh, the removal of the metabolic waste products so this is a very very important this is the most important thing that this system is doing for your body so after the metabolism what is being produced we have a whole lot of nitrogenous waste products now these nitrogenous waste products they can be like ammonia they can be it can be converted to urea it can be some uric acid so these kidneys they are removing these waste products out of the body now these waste products when they are taken out of the blood by this particular system or the excretory system or the kidney of mammals so that is a kind of blood purification method also so this is one of uh, you can say the first function of the mammalian kidney if we go further it regulates the water content of the body fluids so this is a very very important next function you can say of this particular system so this system it is regulating the water content in the whole of the body so that means it is going for the process of osmoregulation so as the osmoregulation is the you can say regulation of the water and the salts in the body and we know that more of the salts need more of the water so if you are eating more of the salts in your diet so your body will require more of the water your bp is going to rise if you are taking more of the salt now why is it rising that if you are taking more of the salts your blood will take more of the water more of the water will be imbibed the volume of the blood will increase and when the volume increases blood pressure also increases so this is a simple mechanism that how the salt can affect the content of the water in your body so this human kidney it is also very helpful in the removal of the extra water or vice versa in the conservation of the body water so it can conserve water also so that means it can regulate the water content of the body fluids so body fluids refers to the extra cellular fluid or it can be it can be the blood also if uh, if it is taken into consideration so next thing which is very very important for this particular uh, organ is the regulation of the ph of the body fluids so this is again a very important thing uh, which is performed by the mammalian kidney so this is the regulation of the ph now if i talk something about the ph ph is uh, refer to as the concentration of the hydrogen ions inside the body so if you have more of the hydrogen ions in your body fluids that will be a low of the ph and if you have less of the hydrogen ions that can be the uh, more of the ph so that means uh, the hydrogen ions they will produce some kind of acid in your body so uh, it also helps in the regulation of these ions 
Now, if I take the next function of the mammalian kidney, it is uh, that it helps in the regulation of chemical composition of body fluids. Now, this is uh, again a good uh, function of this kidney. As uh, to maintain a particular chemical composition of the body fluids, which is not only pertaining to the regulation of the hydrogen ions, but there can be some other ions also whose concentration is to be maintained in the body fluids and the kidney helps in this particular maintenance. So what happens that uh, uh, this chemical composition is maintained by the removal of the substances which are in excess of the immediate requirements. So this is a very very important point to note. Now, if there is uh, a chemical substance which is present in your body and which is not of immediate importance, that will be removed by the kidneys. Now, this is uh, uh, altogether a kind of uh, autonomic, you can say, AI kind of a system. So this is an automatic system and if you don't need a particular compound, that will be removed automatically by the kidneys into the urine through the urine. So this is the regulation of the chemical composition of the body fluids by the mammalian kidney. So students, if we take all these functions into account as a whole for a mammalian kidney, then you can judge that what is the importance of this organ in our body. So there can be like urea, it can be uric acid, it can be some crystals, it can be, it can be like uh, ketone bodies. So the removal of all these substances <clears throat> or some toxins even, if you are taking some drugs, if you are taking some antibiotics, if you are taking crocin, even paracetamol or any kind of salt into your body, that will be removed by the kidneys. So that is a very very important organ as per the removal of the excretion or the excretive products is concerned. Now if we talk something about uh, the kidney or you can say the whole excretive system, the kidney it has got a rich blood supply. So a particular renal artery it is supplying the blood to the kidney and it regulates the blood composition at a steady state. Now that's how it can purify the blood, it can maintain the status, it can maintain the homeostasis. So if you have a rich blood supply to the kidney, then only it can, you can say, uh, purify it. So we have got a quite thick renal arteries which are going to the kidneys. Now, it therefore it is contributing to the homeostatic mechanism. So ultimately what we have is the homeostasis. Now this ensures that the composition of the tissue fluid is maintained at an optimum level for the cells uh, and this is the most important thing. So the composition of the tissue fluid it is maintained by this particular homeostatic mechanism. So it also enables the cells to function efficiently uh, 24 hours, 365 days. So that means uh, maintaining a particular environment for the cells to function in a proper or optimum way, uh, this is done by the kidneys. So this is a quite important thing. Now students, uh, in the coming section, I will be taking up the uh, excretory system as such for you uh, in case of vertebrates or a typical mammalian uh, excretory system. Now this diagram is showing you a particular human excretory system. Now there is a pair of kidneys in humans which are situated towards the back of the lower part of the abdominal kidney. So here we have a pair of kidneys which are present. This is the left kidney and that will be the right kidney. 
So we have got a pair of kidneys and uh, the left kidney it lies slightly above the right one. So this is uh, one of the peculiar feature. And now the kidneys they receive the blood from the aorta via the renal arteries. So if you uh, see over here we have got the aorta. So this is the aorta from which the blood is coming down from the heart and it is going to the kidney. So here we have the renal artery. And if uh, you see over here, this is the renal vein which is going out of the kidney. The renal veins, they are taking uh, the blood back to the posterior vena cava. So on the very top, we have the posterior vena cava and the blood is going from the kidney into this vena cava and it's going back towards the heart. <clears throat> now the urine formed in these kidneys, they pass by a pair of ureters. So here we have the ureters of left and the right side and this is going to the bladder where it is stored until it is released via the urethra. So this part is the bladder and at the tip we have the urethra. So the flow of the urine will be through the ureters into the bladder and from the bladder towards the out. So this is the mechanism or this is the overall uh, you can say structure of the excretory system. Now there are two muscle sphincters which surround the urethra where it leaves the bladder. So at this particular point we have the sphincter where it is leaving the urethra. So here we have these two muscles one of which is under voluntary control. So we can control this particular muscle. Uh, this is one of them and these control the release of the urine and this process is called as the urination or the micturition process. So this is the removal of the urine. So it is said that if you have a half filled bladder, if it is uh, filled to a half or the 50% is uh, filled with the urine, so we have a urination urge to go for urination or for micturition. Otherwise it can store urine for even more of the percentage. Now if you go for a transverse section of the kidney, it can show you two distinct regions. The outer is the cortex and inner is the medullary part. Now students, after this particular excretory system, now we are going for a TS of the kidney. Now in this diagram, you can very well see that we have a cortex part. This is the cortex part, the gray one, and we have the medulla part, which is the white colored part. It is in the center. So cortex literally means the peripheral part. It is the outer part. So these are the two major parts of the kidney. And if we go further, the cortex is covered by a fibrous connective tissue, which is forming a tough capsule kind of a thing. So here you can see uh, it has been labeled as the fibrous capsule. So it is the connective tissue which is present over the cortical part. Now the cortex, it contains the glomeruli. So this is a very, very important thing. If you see uh, the position of uh, a nephron in a kidney, then you can very well see the, you can say the glomeruli or the Bowman's capsules, they are present in the cortex part. And if you see the collecting tubules or the loop of Henle, they are present in the medullary part. So this is, uh, you can say a major, uh, this is the position, this is a very important position of the nephrons 
and uh, we have got two types of nephrons in the kidneys i'll be taking up uh, later on so here what is uh, present is that the cortex it is containing the glomeruli the renal corpuscles as we say it has with the bowman's capsule so if we take the glomerulus and the bowman's capsules all together it is forming a renal corpuscle uh, the medulla it is composed of the tubular parts of the nephron and it is also containing the blood vessels so uh, this is a very important thing to note that uh, the loop of henle's the tubes and the capillaries or the vasa recta it is present in the medullary part now they together they are forming a particular structure which is called as a pyramid so pyramids are present in the medulla part these are shown here in white colors so here it has been shown to have four pyramids now these pyramids they are the collection of the tubular parts of the nephrons so they are also referred to as the renal pyramids now the apex of each pyramid is called as a papilla now here you can very well see this is a papilla of the first pyramid and that will be the papilla of the second pyramid this is of the third and this is of the fourth pyramid so these are the papillae of the pyramids so i i just uh, i'm just trying to rub all the things to make it more clear so what we have done is that we have pyramids this is the collection of the nephrons every pyramid has got a papilla and all the pyramids they project into the pelvis which leads to the ureter now this is a very important thing again so these papillae which are present in all the pyramids they are opening into this space and this space is called as the pelvis now this is the major part of the kidney where all the urine is collected now this pelvis is connected with the ureter part and the urine it will flow from the pelvis into the ureter simple so this is the structure of a typical mammalian kidney so a large number of blood vessels they run through the kidney and supply a vast network of capillary network you can see so uh, this is the overall structure of the kidney and if we go for the anatomy of the kidney we have done it we have gone through the ts of the kidney showing the position of the two nephrons particularly over here and this is the generalized structure of the kidney so students after uh, the structure of the kidney now we are to the nephron so we have seen the position of the nephron in the kidney uh, here you can also see the glomerulus and the bowman's capsule both are referred to as the renal corpuscle and they are present in the cortex part now here it is very well uh, uh, shown in this particular diagram that uh, these renal corpuscles they are present in the cortex and if you talk about the loop of henle and the major part of the collecting duct it is present in the medulla so this is the position of the you can see a nephron in the kidney now if we go further the nephron it is the basic structure or it is the basic unit i should say <clears throat> of structure and function of the kidney so this is the basic unit and we have got lakhs of nephrons in a particular kidney uh, it is associated with the blood supply now this is a very important point uh, we have an efferent arteriole which is coming into the glomerulus and an efferent arteriole is going out of the glomerulus so here you can very well see 
the presence of the arterioles both efferent and efferent uh, in each of the kidneys in a human if i talk about myself it is containing an estimated 1 million nephrons so there can be 10 lakhs of nephrons per kidney in humans uh, the total uh, approximate length is 3 centimeters now this is uh, uh, the length of uh, the human kidney uh, the total length of the tubules in each kidney is about 120 kilometers now just imagine okay, if we uh, stretch them out the whole nephrons from head to tail it can go up to 120 kilometers so that means uh, there are a huge tubular capillary network which is formed inside the nephron or inside the whole kidney now this particular length of the tubule it offers an enormous surface area for the exchange of the materials so this is very very important now about one-fifth of the blood it passes through the kidneys for each circuit of the body and about uh, 125 cubic centimeters of the fluid is filtered out of the blood per minute so this is a very high rate of you can say the filtration which is going on in our kidneys and uh, if I take uh, the water content which is returning uh, into the blood so it is about 99% of the total filtrate now if I justify this particular sentence it is that about 99% of the water is returned to the blood or you can say it is reabsorbed so if you have a total content of uh, the filtrate which is filtered over here in the Bowman's capsule and 99% of the water will be taken out of this tubule and only 1% will be going down as the urine. So that means a big amount of filtrate is produced in a single day by the renal corpuscles and 99% of that filtrate it is reabsorbed and only 1% is given out in the form of the urine so that simply means that our kidney is uh, doing a whole lot of work a whole day now students uh, going straight away about the structure of a particular nephron uh, each nephron it is composed of uh, six main regions so what are the six main regions of the nephron the first it is the renal corpuscle so it is this part of the nephron the renal corpuscle so it is also called as the malphigian body now it is composed of the renal capsule and the glomerulus what we call as the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus the second part it is the proximal convoluted tubule what we call as the PCT so this is the proximal convoluted tubule what is convoluted which is uh, like going here and there this is having convolutions so that's why it is called as convoluted tubule the third is the descending limb of the loop of Henle. So this is the third part. Descending, which is coming down. It is a thin part of the loop of Henle. As we have, this is, uh, you can say, this is the whole loop of Henle. And this is divided into three major parts. The first part of loop of Henle is the descending limb okay now if we go further the fourth part of the nephron is the ascending limb of loop of Henle so this is the ascending limb and this ascending limb has got again two parts first it is the thin ascending limb and a thick ascending limb so I am taking these two parts uh, you can say as a single part so these are the ascending limbs so we have a descending limb we have an ascending limb next the fifth part of 
the nephron it is the distal convoluted tubule so this is also called as the dct now students there is one very important thing over here now just see that the distal convoluted tubule is very very close to the glomerulus it is very close to the bowman's capsule now this is a particular uh, you can say aff affinity of dct towards the renal corpuscle so i'll be taking this affinity into account later on after this we have the last part of the nephron and this is called as the collecting duct now this is the last part which is taking all the excretory products from all the nephrons so here we have a excretory product of another nephron this nephron is giving the product like this we have from here and here and here so everything is collected in the collecting duct so students that was the simplified structure of a nephron now students we are talking about uh, the two types of nephrons that are found in the kidney now there are basically two types of nephrons the first are called as the cortical nephrons and second are called as the juxta medullary nephrons so if you see this particular diagram so i can give you an idea that what are uh, uh, these two types of nephrons the first type is of the cortical nephrons now these are all together present in the cortex now if i take uh, the juxta medullary this is the second type and here you can very well see that there is an affinity of the distal convoluted tubule with the bowman's capsule so what i was talking about uh, uh, earlier so this is the affinity and uh, these are the two types of the nephrons now these two types they are differing in their positions in the kidney the cortical nephrons they are found in the cortex and they have relatively short loop of henle so here you can very well see their loop of henle is they are shorter in length now these loop of henle is they are just they are just extending into the medulla part but they are not going deep into the medulla so they are uh, you can say they are only present in the cortex part the juxta medullary type of nephrons which is the second type <clears throat> they have their name because they are the renal corpuscles and they are very close to the uh, you can say the cortex so okay now if we talk about the juxta glomerulary or juxta medullary nephrons uh, they have uh, their renal corpuscles very close to the junction of the cortex and the medulla so here you can very well see in the juxta medullary nephrons that their renal corpuscle which is the bowman's capsule and the glomerulus now this part is very close to the junction of the cortex and medulla so they are we can say below in position and they are present at the junction of the cortex and the medulla part and the major difference the second major difference between these two is that they have long loops of henle so as you can very well see in the diagram so the loop of henle is of juxta medullary nephrons they are quite longer as compared to the cortical nephrons they have got smaller loop of henle now the two types of the nephrons they have different uses even so they have uh, different kind of functions you can say so under the normal conditions of water availability the cortical nephrons they deal with the control of the blood volume whereas uh, when the water is short in supply the increased water retention it occurs through the juxta medullary nephrons so students if you have uh, 
normal conditions of water. So the cortical nephrons, they deal with the control of the volume. Then we have the cortical nephrons, which are dealing with the, you can say the homeostasis or the homeostatic mechanism of uh, dealing with the volumes of the blood. And if we take uh, some emergency conditions when the water is short in the supply or we are taking in less of the water supply, uh, then the juxtamedullary nephrons, they work in that particular condition. So now students, uh, here we are talking about the entry of the blood into the kidney and how it is going up to the nephron. Now, first of all, the blood, it enters the kidney by the renal artery, which branches into uh, rather fine arteries before entering into the glomerulus. So, uh, the renal artery, it, first of all, it uh, branches into many small arterioles. And these arterioles, they are coming to the glomerulus. So here you can very well see this is an efferent arteriole which is coming to the glomerular site. Now the filtered blood, it leaves the glomerulus by an efferent arteriole. So the blood leaves the glomerulus from this efferent arteriole and then it will be going for the tibules. So that is called as the vasa recta. Uh, now, it flows through a network of capillaries. Now, when it is going out of the efferent arterioles, it is going for the network of the capillaries in the cortex part. So, if you see, this is the cortex part of the tubular capillary network, I should say. So, this is the blood capillary network in the cortex part. So, it enters this part and uh, it surrounds the proximal and the distal convoluted tubules. Now here you can very well see that in the cortex part, this uh, vasa recta, or you can say the, uh, you can, uh, the efferent arterioles, uh, they are making some capillaries around the proximal convoluted tubule and the distal convoluted tubule. Now after this, it is also going for loop of Henle. So it is going around the loop of Henle. So it is also going up to the level of the medulla. So it is going both in the cortex and in the medulla. The capillaries of the vasa recta. So this is written over here as the vasa recta. So vasa recta is the network of the capillaries which are formed around the loop of Henle and around the uh, convoluted tubules. Now, the capillaries of this vasa recta, they are running parallel to the loops of Henle. So this is a very important point. So both are running parallel. And the collecting ducts in the medulla. So this is again an important thing, that these are parallel to the collecting tubules also. So, this is the way that how these capillaries, they have made their connection with the nephron. Now, these networks of uh, the blood vessels, they are containing the substances which are useful to the body. And uh, they are giving it to the general circulation of the body through this particular vein. So they are going out through this vein. And this vein is actually making the, uh, you can say the renal vein. So that blood will go out of the kidney and uh, we have the incoming from this side and outgoing from this side. The blood flow through this vasa recta, if I take this vasa recta into account, so the blood which flows through this particular part, it is much less than through the capillaries around the proximal and the distal convoluted tubules. So that means the blood which is flowing in the cortex region, it is greater than the blood going into the vasa recta of the loop of Henle. So what happens? Uh, this enables 
a water potential or you can say a solute potential gradient or a difference to be maintained in the tissue of the medulla as it will be uh, taken on later. So this particular uh, you can say the presence of a high blood content in the cortex as compared to the medulla is uh, making a difference in the solutes in the cortex and medullary part of the kidney. So this is a very important uh, function of this capillary network around the nephron. So it will be dealt on later. So students, if we go with the, the process now, that how the, uh, you can say the urine is formed or uh, the ultrafiltration process, it goes on. So I'll be taking some of the concepts over here uh, for, you can say the pressure difference or the ultrafiltration process. So students, uh, that was all about the structure, the gross structure of the whole of the kidney. And uh, uh, we also discussed the structure of a nephron. We also discussed about the, you can say, the blood uh, proliferation or the network of the capillaries which are around the nephron. We dealt with it. So that was about the basic structure of the kidney along with the nephron. And now in the next part of uh, the lecture, we'll be taking up the histology uh, to some extent, and we are taking up the physiology of this nephron, that how this nephron, it works to form the urine in a particular vertebrate animal. So thank you for now. Thanks.